It's the Full Force News Burst brought to you by General Joe's Reborn.com with me, Diagnostic 80, and Justin Bell. Hello, an animated Transformers movie to be directed by the guy who did Toy Story 4? You had me at hello. Last night, Deadline reported news that an animated Transformers movie had been activated and Josh Cooley, the man behind Toy Story 4, was on directorial duties. Hasbro's entertainment studio E1 and Paramount Pictures are behind the move for the man who picked up Best Animated Feature at the Oscars this year and he will apparently direct the Transformers origin story, revolving around the relationship between Optimus Prime and Megatron on Cybertron. With a script written by Andrew Barra and Gabrielle Ferrari, Famous for their production work on Ant-Man and writing duties for Ant-Man and the Wasp, it's clear that Hasbro, E1 and Paramount Pictures aren't messing about with this one. The feature will be totally separate from the live-action film series and the most recent Bumblebee continuity, and as studios come to terms with the current pandemic, it's clear that an animated movie is far easier to produce whilst adhering to the strict social distancing guidelines. According to reports, Cooley is currently overseeing a final draft with the writers now, who have been working on the script for a number of years, going back to the writer's room that was assembled to expand the Transformers universe. It is highly likely that Lorenzo de Bonaventura, Mark Veradian, and of course Brian Goldner will have producer credits on this one. Justin, excited to see something like this for the Transformers franchise? I am. I think it's it's a really cool idea. I mean, the, um, the obvious confusion will come between you know we've got the Bayverse, the bumblebeeverse we've got this netflix series and now we've got this thing so you know and it doesn't seem to be any real connective tissue between any of them but i am i mean i think it's it's a really cool idea and they certainly have some good folks working on it behind the scenes yeah i mean we, we are nowhere near seeing any visuals for this yet of course but do you expect right. how do you expect this one to look um now, how do I expect it and how will it yes. probably will look or two different things, but I, I expect it probably pretty CGI, probably CG heavy, you know, a lot of computer generated stuff. I mean, I think that that's easier to do when you're talking about robots and, and artificial planets and stuff like that. It's probably a lot simpler to do it in computer generated fashion. Yeah. Do you expect, I mean, do you, do you think it's going to look that kind of, because I'm, I'm not a massive fan of like the most recent kind of like the, even the Netflix series that's coming out soon, that's going to be along the same lines as that kind of clunky, right. very like cumbersome yeah. CGI. Do you think they? I mean, do you think it's going to look like that, or do you think they're going to go more? But with it being like a theatrical release, do you think it would be more, uh, you know, kind of more like beautiful animation? Should we say? Yeah, I think this this seems at least at um, on the surface to be a little bit more high budget and a little bit more resources behind it. So I'm hoping they'll be able to do some really interesting things with it. Um, I think, unfortunately, you know, when it comes to, you know, I don't even want to talk about that, you know, the the trilogy of whatever oh, it was so CGI, cool. it, was, it was terrible. But I think in, in those cases, animation was kind of thrown in as a vehicle to tell whatever the story is. Uh, and that's something that seems to be kind of lost these days with animated features is, you know, there's there's benefits to using animation. So yeah, take advantage of it. You know, you want to you want to do some cool things with with animation you know you want to use leverage what animation does that live action cannot or will not and and really take advantage of it so i think this is a cool opportunity for them to do some really interesting things that maybe they they wouldn't or couldn't do in live action so yeah i'm hoping they they can make it look a lot more polished a lot more you know especially if they're if they are kind of putting it together for a potential theatrical release it's got to stand out in the crowd you know it can't it can't have this netflix style you know, thudding, clunky, slow, progressive CG animation that's just not going to fly in a movie theater. So that that gives me hope that they'll do something a lot cooler with it. You know, I'm not trying not to get my hopes up too much for, for Cell animation. I think the, the, the time of Cell animation has probably passed us by. But if they can make it a lot more kind of using CG, but making it yeah. look a lot more professional, a lot more polished and high budget, I think that'd be great. That, yeah, totally. And I mean, they could even, I mean, this is just, I'm just throwing this out there. It, they could go the route of uh, trying to make it look like that kind of original cell sh shaded, et yeah. cetera, et cetera, animation. Uh, obviously, but going through the, the route of, you know, the current technology, there is that option yeah. that they have at their disposal, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. That would be that'd be amazing if they would, you know, go through the trouble of doing something like that. Yeah. I mean, we've looked, we've seen the Megatron Optimus Prime kind of or not origin <laughs> story, but we've seen that kind of development of those characters for many, many years yeah. over multiple different iterations. What do you want to see explored in this particular story? What are you looking forward to 
in an origin story with these two characters? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, Transformers has gone out of its way kind of as a brand to, you know, in years past to kind of say, okay, now this is our universe now and we're sticking to this. And I, I remember it was some big, huge story back with the War of Cybertron video game that everything was going to connect back to that. And that was, that was the story, the mythology. And obviously that's really no longer the case. And, mm. and what they can... As far as the stories they can tell um, with Prime and Megatron, it's going to be difficult. I mean, as far as like on a movie screen or a TV screen, we haven't really seen the quote unquote war of Cybertron a whole lot. I mean, you know, obviously we experienced it through video games. We saw that great scene in um, in the Bumblebee film, you know, and obviously they've alluded to it through various animated iterations. And it looks like they might be focusing on that a little bit for this Netflix series. But um, I mean, it'd be kind of cool to see, you know, some stuff leading up to that. There, there's a lot of difference of opinions, kind of how that story ramps up and how we get to the point where the Autobots and Decepticons are actually at war. And I think showing some of that lead up, some of the political meandering and kind of, you know, really establishing, I don't want to say what is the truth and what is the fiction, because, you know, we've, we've heard sorts of different you know, different backgrounds, yeah. um, you know, an IDW went as far as to make Megatron and Autobot kind of related to some of that stuff. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to kind of see the initial lead up to the war and and get right down into some of the gritty details of, you know, not that I want a film that just focuses on robots <laughs> destroying each other for two hours, but, um, but man, I mean, that, that little five to six minute snippet in the Bumblebee movie just really whet my appetite for that sort of for a film like that. And of course they could do that in live action and without it being animated. But um, I mean, I think it'd be really, there, there's some interesting things they could do. I, I don't think a lot of people know necessarily what the background for Megatron and, and prime is. I don't know if they would go to the pa- the problem of like having him be Orion Pax or whatever his name was mm. leading up to Optimus prime. Cause obviously, you know, the, the draw is Optimus prime. It's not Orion Pax. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, but th- there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of stuff they could pull from there. A lot of stuff that the IDW comics covered that maybe moviegoers and, and cartoon watchers aren't familiar with um, that they could pull from. It could be pretty interesting. I, I could see them delving into the, the, the already deep history of this uh, this brand to kind of, you yeah. know, show, show them pr- prior to them becoming the characters they are like today. Uh, you know, like Megatron being on like the kind of gladiator kind of style or maybe yeah. even, you know, him in All Hail Megatron where he was kind of like you know, in, in the, the, the pits, in the mines and all that kind of stuff. So exactly. it, it would be yeah. interesting to see that. For um, Personally, from my point of view, I want them, I want to see that. I want to see that kind of development through the film. But then also I want to see like some sort of huge battle at the end between, you know, maybe right. the start of the war or something would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, a cool way to kind of to, to end things would be, yeah, some massive battle on Cybertron and, and not necessarily the Autobots escaping Cybertron to head to Earth, but just kind of the initial start of the mm. big major conflicts would be cool. And, and it's going to be interesting to see kind of how they approach it, because I know there's some, you know, some questions about, you know, who were, who was the good guy and who was the bad guy kind of leading up to the actual war, because a lot of people think, you know, there was some question about whether or not the yeah. Decepticons, you know, were more noble than were led to believe and were just kind of fighting for their own rights and freedoms or whatever. But, you know, we'll we'll kind of see what they do it could be interesting absolutely uh justin thanks for jumping on mate and chatting about this in very interesting uh prequel transformers movie news absolutely anytime that's it for this installment of the full force news burst thank you to my awesome co-host justin bell see you next time and as always um uh, i can't think of anything that the trans uh, roll out <laughs> <laughs> done Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback or questions. We have also started a Patreon page so if you want to see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force